title of the sermon is A Light Shining in Darkness. <clears throat> Who walks in darkness? Who walks in the light? Only God's called and converted people are different from the world. They walk in light. That comes from God. Of course, the world is walking in darkness. The world for now rejects and understands not God's true ways. They laugh and scoff when they see or, or hear of God's few call who obey God. I've had that happen to me, you know, people snigger, you know, and, oh, I, that old weird religion. <laughs> I had one guy I worked for years with him. He thought I was weird. I thought he was weird, but I didn't <laughs> ever tell him. <laughs> but he one day was going for lunch to get something to eat at dinner time. He said, he said, Scott, you're a good old guy. You know, I always treated him right and tried to be good to him. He said, but you have a weird religion. <laughs> I said, well, you know what? That weird religion is what makes me the way I am. Because he didn't understand that either. But anyway, who is to say what's religious? Is the world, do they have that authority? No, they don't. God is the one who says what is religion and how to <laughs> conduct your life. God is the only one that knows that. But we, through God, have our, our opportunity to be different from the world. You know, Christ said, come out of the world. Why? The world's deceived. They don't realize what they're doing. They're going the broad way that leads to death. We need to avoid that. Of course, they do too, but they will have their opportunity in the future. We have to be different from the world. Will they too, through God, have their opportunity to change in a future new world? Of course. But let's look at some things that the Bible. John 6, 44. I go over this scripture a lot of times because it sets the precedent for what's going on. There's a, this is a really important scripture in the Bible. Here Jesus is speaking. He said, No man can come to me. The world's religion says, come on to Jesus and believe in him and you'll be saved. He didn't say that. He said, no man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him or call him, and I will raise him up or resurrect him at the last day. Does the Bible confirm that? The world says, oh, if you... Give your heart to the Lord. You've been born again. That's not what the Bible teaches. Let's briefly look and see. But anyway, God must call people or they will go to the false Jesus. And you don't want to be found in cahoots with the false Jesus that the world thinks they worship. Because that will lead you in the way of destruction. But anyway, God's got to call you. You'll be born again when Christ returns. Does the scripture say that? Does it confirm that? Or does the scripture get confused about what's right and what's wrong? No, the scripture don't. People is what gets confused about that. Most in this present evil world are confused about what is right or wrong. God only has the authority to say to all people what they should believe and follow. God knows what is righteous. The world don't. Let's look and see what the Bible says what is righteous. It's Psalms 119, verse 172. <clears throat> Psalms 
Psalms 119 and verse 172. Here David said, My tongue shall speak of your word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. So David said, God inspired him to say this. It says, All thy commandments are righteousness. The world does not believe that. They might believe nine of them would be righteous, but that fourth one, they certainly would object to hit. What is the fourth commandment? Remember the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, and keep it holy. That is part of this scripture here of what is true righteousness. That's why we're here today. Because God's called us and God's revealed that day to us. But anyway, we concur and accept the world rejects what is righteousness. Remember, if you break one of the commandments, you've done wrong. You've missed the mark. So, we see that We've got to accept what God says is righteousness. If you don't, if you believe, no, I'll decide for myself what is righteous and what is not. That's going the wrong way. Let's look at some more scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2, beginning in <clears throat> verse 11. First Corinthians 2. Beginning in verse 11 through 14. It says, For what man knows the things of man, save by the spirit or human nature of the man which is in him? People, you know, they know manly things, but it's things that are human nature. Even so, the things of God knows no man but by the spirit of God. We would not know what we know today. We know a little. We can't say we know that much because we don't. But you've got to have the Spirit of God to understand these things. The world won't get it, won't understand it. They'll know human things. I can decide for myself what I want to do, what's right and what's wrong. God don't say that nowhere in the Bible that you can do that. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, the world deceived, but the spirit which is of God, the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, Man's wisdom is going to teach you some bad things, wrong things, if you go along with them. But which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, but the natural mind, the natural mind is an unconverted mind. You know, one deceived, of course they don't realize it. But the natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. That's, you know, if you know a little bit of God's truth and you really understand a little bit of God's truth, the world's going to say, that's pure hogwash or foolishness or whatever they say. Sometimes they say some pretty spiteful words. The natural man, man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So people can't understand God's truth unless God is working with them, calling them, opening up the spiritual part to them. 1 Peter 3. First Peter 3, beginning in verse 15. It says, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, 
And be ready always to give an answer to every man that I ask you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience, whereas they speak of you, they speak evil of you as evildoers. That's what the world thinks we are. We think that we're so bad, wrong, occult, evildoers. That's what they think about of us. Whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation or good conduct in Christ. They, that's talking about the future times when they can begin to see and understand and we'll, we'll get the last word in people that says we're foolish and we're deceived and we're occult and we're so bad wrong, we'll get the last word in yet, but it'll be on down the road. Let's look at 2 Peter 2, chapter 2, 2 Peter 2 and chapter uh, verse 1 and 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets among you, who privately shall bring in damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow the pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. That's what God's truth, the way, God's way of truth is spoken of as if it was evil. It's not evil, but to them it is evil and wrong and all that. Let's look at James 1, verse 17 and 18. <clears throat> James 1, and verse 7, beginning in verse 17. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, from God, and comes down from the Father of lights. Are we light? I hope we're light and the, the world, you know, sees us. They won't see us as a light now, but in the future. And the Father of light, in whom is no variableness, either shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation, create creatures, of God's creation. We are God's first fruit. There was one first fruit, but there's going to be first fruits that are born again at the return of Jesus Christ. The first one to enter into God's kingdom. Of course, Christ was the first one of all, that happened about 2,000 years ago. If God in this present evil world only calls a few to be his firstborn children to rule as kings and priests on the earth, soon now, jot down Revelation 5 verse 10, won't turn there. What about the many people who were never called? What about them? If God is only calling us to know his truth and he says it's not his will that anyone should perish then obviously he's got a plan Luke 3 6 <coughs> Luke 3 and verse 6 he says, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So all people is going to see the salvation of God. Now, most people will probably enter, you know, through being converted and following God. They will enter in. That's what we're doing now. We see God's salvation because we understand things today and we follow <laughs> those things. But people in the world don't understand now. So they're going to see later. So we see that all people will see God's salvation. 
some will enter. Obviously, some will be cast out. If God cannot work with a person, they're evil, and that's it. They're an evil person, and they won't change to live God's way. Then, of course, they're going to be cast out. You can write, write down these scriptures, won't turn there. Ezekiel 37 will explain about the people coming up, you know. And Revelation 20, verse 4 through 15. That'll explain more about it. But I don't want to turn there. You all can read it later. All people will be accounted for unto God. We can thank, thank God for that. And they can thank God for that in the future. We hope all people make the right decision and live. We will get to help many people, not now, but in the future. You can't help people now because God's got to call them, open up their mind to see the things that we see today because if he don't call them, they won't see it. They won't have it. They'll reject it. Sinners who cannot or will not make the right decision, you know, to love God and follow God and obey God, you know, and stuff like that. If they can't do that, make that right decision, they will be cremated to ashes, never to be anymore. That is a second death. Only life from God goes on forever. Let us all, through God, walk in life.